this video, I'm going to try and make a connection between how muscles shorten, that is, contract on the gross anatomical scale, and how this actually happens when you look at them on the molecular scale. What you're looking at right now, actually, is a slide of some skeletal muscle, voluntary muscle, and it's called striated because you can see it's got a bunch of stripes in it. And they go back and forth like this, almost like zebra stripes. And that actually is what's going to cause the shortening, as we'll see when we get down to the molecular level. So what's going on is that muscles are innervated by nerves, which come into a neuromuscular junction. They release neurotransmitters, as we've discussed before, which then go ahead and cause an action potential to be generated in a muscle. Okay, let's go through the steps how that happens. So, a nerve comes down and releases a neurotransmitter. That neurotransmitter is usually acetylcholine, which is abbreviated as ACH, acetylcholine. That goes across the synapse and it makes contact with the muscle. Now the muscle is surrounded by a membrane, which is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And when that neurotransmitter makes contact with that membrane, it starts a new action potential. That action potential then goes all around the muscle, okay? And it causes the muscle to release calcium ion, which is inside. And that calcium ion, as we'll see, is what's going to eventually cause contraction to take place in the muscle. Okay. Let's take a look at that at closer detail. Now, if you tear apart the muscle, you look at these stripes, and you begin to see that there's a pattern which is emerging here. Okay? You can see down here, there's a repeating pattern. Now, those repeating patterns are units called sarcomere. What is a sarcomere? It is the basic unit of contraction. And it almost looks like an accordion, right? So you're seeing many of them occurring here. Here's a sarcomere. Here's a sarcomere. And they continue on down the line. Now, each one of those sarcomeres is going to actually shorten, contract. And so the overall muscle then will also contract. There is a sarcomere. Now, what you're looking at right now is a sarcomere taken with an electron microscope. That's why it's black and white. And you can see that it has several different parts to it, right? It is divided by two lines, which we call the Z lines. So in between the Z lines is the unit, the sarcomere. And then you can see within it, there are all of these stripes in here, right? And those stripes are what we call thin and thick filaments. And if you take your fingers of your hands and put them together, and bring them closer and closer together, they fold over each other as your hands shorten. Basically the same idea of what's going on in the sarcomere. And there's thousands of these all connected up, and they shorten together, and that causes the muscle to contract. What are those thick and thin filaments? Well, the thick filaments are made of a protein called myosin. Okay, M-Y-O-S-I-N. The thin filaments are made of actually three different proteins called actin, troponin, and tropomyosin. Okay, so here's the thick down here, which is only made of myosin, and the thin is made of tropomyosin, troponin, and actin. So there's four different proteins that make up the filaments which are going to cross over each other. How does this exactly happen on the molecular scale? Well, let's take a look. It is called the sliding filament theory. And here's how it goes. We started off by saying that when a nerve causes an action potential to begin in uh, the muscle, the muscle releases calcium. What's the purpose of the calcium? Well, the calcium binds to troponin and tropomyosin, gets them out of the way, and then it reveals the actin. That's the first step. So now actin is available. 
Myosin likes to bond to actin. And the way it bonds to actin is it first gets itself an ATP, so it's got some energy. It becomes energized. And when it gets energized, what does it want to do? It wants to form bridges, form bonds with the actin. So the thick and thin filaments join together. Now the minute myosin bonds to actin, an explosion takes place. The ATP explodes, it degrades itself to ADP, this is releasing energy. And what happens with that energy being released? It causes the whole thing to move forward. It's almost like a racket wrench set. If you turn it, it kind of keeps screwing itself in. So the whole filament moves forward. Myosin then looks for another ATP, forms another cross bridge, and it does it again and again and again. And just like a racket wrench sent, click, 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 the fibers keep moving forward, 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 forward. This will keep going on until calcium is pumped out of the system. It's called the sliding filament theory because the filaments slide over each other as myosin and actin form bridges and ATP powers them to go forward, forward, forward. Now, this actually explains what rigor mortis is when you die. Why do your muscles get so hardened? Because when you die, uh, you don't produce any more ATP, so you can't power those filaments to go forward. So they make bonds, but they don't go forward. They don't slide. And they never break their bonds because you're dead. You can't pump the calcium out of the system. So that's what causes rigor mortis. Okay, that is the sliding filament theory. Now let's talk about one more thing before we go out. Muscles are different than nerves. Now in nerves, we said that an action potential was an all or nothing event. It either happens or it doesn't. Not so in muscles. You got a lot of fibers down there. Not all of them have to fire off at the same time. So we can get different strength muscle contractions. If you get a single muscle firing, like over here, 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 and here, that is called a twitch. Okay? So let's write that in there. That's a single muscle fiber. That's called a twitch. If you get a lot of twitches going at the same time, so you get a lot of nerves firing off a lot of muscle fibers, then you get event like this which is called summation okay so summation in other words you're getting a more powerful uh, contraction going on here let's go ahead and spread that out eventually you get so many of these guys firing at the same time that it plateaus you reach maximum activity and that is over here and that is an event called tetanus and tetanus actually is what happens when you get lockjaw or a bacterial infection where the muscles never stop contracting the problem is is that we're not able to keep maximum muscle activity going for very long even though you keep firing off the muscle the uh, nerves even though the calcium is flowing and the ATP you just can't seem to maintain it you lose strength and eventually you have something called muscle fatigue and it just goes down. Nobody really quite knows why that is. It's not for lack of ATP. Something else is probably going on there. A lot of people think it may be to do with the pH, lactic acid buildup. Good place for a Nobel Prize to be won, I guess. Last thing I want to talk about. Um, there are two different muscles. There are muscles which are fast muscles and slow muscles. They have different activities. Um, so, for example, muscles that we use for endurance would probably be slow muscles. Muscles that we use for quick motions, fast muscles. A really good way to see this, see this is actually um, in chickens and turkeys. So those of us who like white meat and dark meat, for example. Uh, white meat uh, tends to come from fast twitch muscles. Uh, dark meat tends to come from slow twitch muscles. So, for example, the muscles that a duck would use to fly long distance probably dark meat, probably slow twitch muscles. And that concludes 